is give her, I think in addition to writing down your feedback the way we normally do, when we take a break, reach out to Sandy and give her some thoughts and comments if, if there's areas of improvement so she can totally nail it tomorrow, okay? So please, help me welcome, help me welcome Sandy. horses. Yeah! <laughs> I would climb the, the hills and the big giant rocks that we used to call monsters. I would get on top of them. I was queen of the hill. And then in second grade, that little girl's inner spark began to wither. The family had moved to New Jersey and the kids in my class used to make fun of my accent when I read out loud. And so I got quieter and quieter until I stopped talking altogether. My teacher was concerned. She called my parents and she said, there's something wrong with your daughter. She doesn't talk in class. She never raises her hand. I think you should take her to a psychiatrist. So my parents took me to the doctor and he ran a battery of tests. And then he called my parents in and he said, there's nothing wrong with your daughter. She's just shy. And that, I became known as the shy girl from that day on. That was my very first label. And it haunted me and held me back for the next 40 years of my life. Mr. Contest Chair, fellow Toastmasters, and welcome guests, have you ever been labeled in your life? And have you let those labels hold you back? My family moved again, and this time in seventh grade. That magical time of your life where your hormones are raging and your body is rapidly changing, but your brain hasn't caught up <coughs> yet. Well, it turned out that I was ahead of my class in almost every subject, but the school refused to put me ahead of grade. They thought it was a good idea to keep me with kids my own age. And that was a bad idea. That first year, I didn't have to study, and I still got A's and B's. By the second year, I still wasn't studying, and my grades had started to slip. And by the ninth grade, when I got my very first F, I got my next label. Underachiever. And I was really good at being the shy underachiever. You see, if, if I didn't speak up, and I didn't study, then nobody would ever find out how smart I really was. And deep down, I was really scared that if I really tried hard and I failed, I would find out that I wasn't as smart as I thought. So I hid behind the cover of the shy underachiever, and my inner spark began to wither even more. I underachieved in college. As an artist, I wanted to go to one of the best schools in the country the Maryland Institute of Art, but I didn't apply. What if I didn't get in? What if I found out that I really wasn't that talented after all? I underachieved in love. When I was in my mid-twenties and the man that I thought I was going to marry left me for another woman, I shut my heart down for good. A few months later, I got engaged to a man who loved me more. I thought he was going to keep my heart safe, but that couldn't be further from the truth. Over time, we drifted apart until we were like two strangers living in the same house. You know what that feels like. <laughs> and I was lonely, I was sad, but underachiever that I was, I thought that was as good as it was going to get. I had given up on love, I had given up on myself, and my inner spark began to wither. It was almost gone until I got a wake-up call. A friend of mine came over and she said, Sandy, 
You're so smart and so talented, but you're living such a small portion of your potential. And it hit me that she was right. I could never achieve my full potential if I stayed in this marriage. I had to get out. Leaving the marriage was scary, but it was much more scary for me to think about staying in this marriage for the rest of my life. And I began to create the life that I wanted and started to really look at the labels that were holding me back, keeping me from that spark of that little girl that grew up in Atlanta. And I looked at this label, this shy label, and I thought, you know, I'm not really shy. This label was here because I was afraid of being judged, so I kept quiet. And I was done with that label. And this label, this was to keep me safe from failing. Done with that one, too. I reached out and got support from a brilliant life coach who helped me to reconnect to my inner spark. And I was able to discover my true calling as a dating coach, where I get to help women shed their labels and connect to their inner spark so that they have authentic relationships with men. And I realized that that shy underachiever had now become a speaker and a leader. Even though I was the second child, and they're not supposed to be leaders. And a love magnet. <laughs> <laughs> so ladies and gentlemen, I ask you, are you ready to shed your labels and reconnect to the inner spark that lies within each and every one of you? The world can't wait for the authentic, real you to shine. Thank you.